Dr. Amy Nowatny. Welcome to Deep Into Sleep podcast. Thank you for having me, Dr. Yishan Zhu. I appreciate you having me come on and share with your audience on ways that we can help improve sleep using something a little bit more unique, breathing. Yeah, I'm actually very excited to have you because I read something about you on your website. Um, uh, you really work on pain, stress, anxiety relief, and how people sleep better. How about you introduce yourself to our audience a little bit? Sure, absolutely. So I'm Dr. Amy Novotny. I, um, several years ago, many years ago, over a decade now, 12 years ago, I got my doctorate in physical therapy. So I originally was looking at just how can I help people out of pain? How do I get them moving better and look at improving their strength, you know, ability to perform in daily life. And after about five years of doing traditional methods, I started diving into something different and that was breathing and not just different types of breathing, but what really happens at a physiological level and what happens with your anatomy and what does breathing do for us besides give us the oxygen. So I shifted. And then as I started shifting, I noticed things in my own life started improving my ability to run faster. I could run marathons, qualify for Boston with with so much ease. And I was able to run the Boston Marathon. I started running long distances, 50 miles without pain. And my sleep, my sleep improved as well. And so I started diving into it. Okay, what was it about what I did with my breathing that helped improve my sleep, that it helped improve me? And it was the fact that I could use the way I breathe to calm down my nervous system, that fight or flight nervous system that ramps us up that keeps us awake, keeps us on, keeps us ramped up and going, I was able to shift and get into this parasympathetic mode where I can rest, digest, and sleep better. And so as I started playing with this on myself first, I used myself as a guinea pig, I started studying it. Then I started implementing it on different patients who came to see me for knee pain or shoulder pain. And they started improving differently. They started improving faster. Nerve pain started improving at much faster paces. And people kept telling me, after I worked with you, I slept for four hours straight. I, slept, I went home and I took a nap. I never felt so rested in my life. I even worked with a sportscaster, an Emmy winning sportscaster in Dallas who covers you know, the NFL. And he said, for the first time, he slept for eight hours straight after we worked together. And before he was up all night long. And it was all just by changing the way he breathes and the way he positions his body because both together affect your nervous system and allow you to calm down. Wow, that's amazing. Because I know our nerve system do play a big role in our sleep, in our relaxation, mm -hmm. right? We often yeah. uh, think about for well, fight or flight if we are too um, like, highly alarmed all the time. Our nerve system work on a threshold and it's always react, very reactive to external stimuli. And then people do tend to wake up uh, or difficulties, have difficulties falling asleep. So sounds like breathing can, if you do it right, if you learn how to breathe, it can really help us to calm this fight or flight nerve system. Absolutely. And the powerful thing is it's breathing when you change the way you position your body. So there's a lot of different types of breathing out there, tons and tons of different types, and they're used for different purposes. And so what I've discovered that if I look at how breathing is, you know, how it works functionally and actually take it apart, I see that, okay, a lot of it's based on your rib cage position that affects your diaphragm. So if I can change the way I position my rib cage, it affects how I breathe, but more importantly, my rib cage also affects that fight or flight nervous system. So if you think about what we're taught for posture, chest out, shoulders back, suck up your gut. As soon as you do that, most people feel increased tension in their body. And what's happening is they're getting ramped up because they're crushing on that fight or flight nervous system that lies along the spine in their back. So if we wanna shift out of that, instead, let's get the rib cage to go back in its neutral position. So stop sticking out your chest and sucking up your gut. Instead, let's let the belly button relax so the rib cage can come down in front. 
That allows your back muscles to relax. It also shifts the way you breathe into a more diaphragmatic breathing, and you can access that vagus nerve to help calm you down. And so it goes counterintuitive to a lot of advice that we're giving children that we hear from athletic coaches that we hear for performing arts, for music, for the military, for speakers, for anyone who deals with, you know, confidence and confidence coaches, it goes against all their advice. But what it does is it allows us to calm down. It allows us to get into that restful mode that allows us to fall asleep. So we're not so wired. So our brain is not working over time. So my question is, if this breathing technique works better right before we go to bed, when we are trying to fall asleep, or it's something we can practice throughout the day? So I actually tell people to practice it throughout the day. Now, ideally, our bodies are not designed to be in fight or flight mode all day long. Mm. Unfortunately, in society nowadays, we are in fight or flight mode all day long, leading to tons of chronic illnesses, anxiety, sleep issues, all of that. So if we expect to be able to sleep at night, we need to change our nervous system so we're not ramped up all day long. Because if you think about it, if you're ramped up all day long, you're when you're in fight or flight mode, there is a physiological response that your muscles tighten up around your body without your awareness. Now, just because you close your eyes, it doesn't mean all of a sudden your nervous system flips a switch and tells those muscles to relax. Mm. So if your body is still tense, you're not gonna be able to sleep because you think you should be awake. So we have to do some practice throughout the day. So even when you first wake up in the morning, I teach people a certain position to go into and then practice this breathing to calm themselves down, to release any tension that happened overnight from sleeping in a weird position or from a nightmare or anything that's going on that put them in, you know, some tension. So we start the day relaxing. Then I say before lunch, you know, if we want to digest well, digest our food, get the nutrients, let's practice a little bit of this specific technique right before lunch for about five minutes. Then before dinner, or when you come home from work, just get rid of the stresses of the day and allow your body to recognize what it feels like to calm down. And then again, before bed, because if we can now break up the nervous system, so it learns how to drop down from that state it's easier when we close our eyes that we can recognize this is how we do it. We can start to release some of the muscles, release some of that internal pressure that we've developed from mental, emotional, physical, spiritual stresses from the day. I really like the connection you mentioned between our body and our nerve system. Because mm -hmm. a lot of time we feel like, oh, it's just so hard for me to come down. Yes. And my, I feel a lot in my body, but I don't know what to do. And a lot of people, a lot of people, they may not know by working on your body, it can help with the nervous system and using breathing is a way to adjust the body reaction. Absolutely. And what we don't realize is if you think about it, if you heard a gunshot go off, your body would tense up right away. Now that wasn't you voluntarily contracting your bicep muscle. It's a reaction that happens when we sense fear that happens at minute levels as well, but we want to counteract that. And so part of this process that I teach people is we can learn how to do that and use that tool to calm ourselves down when we want to, when we choose. So even in high stress situations, let's say you have to speak in front of a large audience or perform you can use that tool then to calm yourself down and you can feel your body just release. So again, right before bed, you can then use this tool to calm yourself down. So you feel the pressure in your chest go away. You feel parts of your body let go in ways that are different from meditation and other types of mindfulness practice. This is a true tool that works on your physiology that gives you control over your body to allow you to fall into that deep sleep. Hmm. Wow. So in your own practice, how mm -hmm. do you coach people to, I, I can imagine you possibly have to educate them. Well, mm -hmm. why this is important. And mm -hmm. then do you offer classes or do you guide people to try this breathing or other techniques with you together? Yeah. So I do a lot of coaching one-on-one. -on -one. 
So I do it through the platform Zoom and it allows me to see how their body's moving. So we'll go through their medical history. I want to know kind of what's going on in their life. You know, what's, what they have physical ailments, trouble, sleep, stress, anxiety, poor performance. So we go through that. Then I go through the science after looking at how their body's moving. So I check out how do they sit, stand, reach, walk, squat, and move because all of those habits will tell me how much their body is in fight or flight mode or relaxation mode. There are certain habits in our movements and how we hold ourselves that tell me how much a person is going to be able to relax at night and be able to sleep at night and be able to let go just by simple thing as squatting or reaching. And so what I do then is then we go through that, explain that to them. We start by then I coach them on how to shift their body position and the way they breathe. And so they start to feel this general relaxation and then they learn how to control that. Then we target areas that are stuck like the breastbone area or just underneath that, the xiphoid process, right? Close to the stomach. Those are areas that we guard a lot of emotional and mental trauma. And so if we can start working on freeing those areas up, people start to feel relief. They can let go, they can fall to sleep. And so I progress them each time I see them and I expect them to feel a change when I work with them. And then they have a recording because I'll give them a recording of it. They can go practice and practice and practice as many times as they want. So they learn how to control themselves and it's not anyone doing something to them. It's an internal change. Wow, sounds quite empowering. It is, it really is. And most people are shocked by it and how much they can sleep again and feel rested and then they have more energy. It just it spirals into so much goodness. Wow, so you can really just observe how their body moves, their gestures mm -hmm. and just help you know quite a lot and you can come up a plan to help coaching them. Absolutely. And anything I see, I explain to them. So that way they can feel what their body's currently state is. And then they can also, as they transform, they can feel how much they shift. And plus with the videos, they can see the actual transformation of their own bodies. And they realize then because they've been coached through this and they've learned the skill, they own it. It's not like, it's not like something that was done to them and it's going to be taken away. It's they truly own it and they can choose to feel differently in this good way. Wow. How long does it take you to help someone learn this and start making a change? So every person's different, obviously. So some people come with 15 different problems. That's going to take a little bit longer. A lot of times the clients I get are people who have tried a lot of different other forms of healthcare and they're at their wit's end and say, okay, I don't want to do surgery. I don't want to have a procedure. I don't want to take a medication, please help. So a lot of times I get that. So those people will take a little bit longer. There are people that, you know, in a couple visits they're done, but I do expect that people feel a change each session. We may not get everything resolved in a session, but I expect them to feel their body shifting and transforming each time because that is how we build. If we start you in a certain state, we need to start adjusting you and changing you. And I want you to feel that relief. And so you go home and practice. Then we meet like a week later and say, okay, now let's see what your body retained and what you can now control. Now let's progress you further. And so sometimes, you know, if someone is really willing and has the time to put in the effort, you know, five minutes of breathing four times a day, they're going to see a big shift. Mm. Sometimes people don't always have that time. So they still feel a shift, but it will take a little bit longer to get to where their goals are. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how many different breathing techniques are out there? Oh gosh, I have no <laughs> idea. Hundreds. I, I don't know. There was a book that came out, um, Breath uh, with Do um, James oh, Nestor that came that. out recently. I read through that and he goes through all these different breathing techniques. Um, you know, there's Wim Hof, there's box breathing, there's sky breathing. There's all these different techniques out there. I have not done the research like he has to know exactly how many types, but there are many, many, many. And they all serve a purpose. 
they all provide relief to someone, otherwise they wouldn't be out there. So mine is just a slightly different variation than those out there. And I use it to help people get control over their sympathetic nervous system to calm it down. Mm, yeah, oh, that's wonderful. So uh, I really like the empowering piece because I think a lot of people when they have insomnia, especially that's the people yeah. I see the most. And a lot of them want to rely on something to mm -hmm. to knock themselves off, basically, right? It's yeah. either it's a sleeping pill or melatonin or some kind of uh, over-the-counter sleep aid. I feel like it's so important for them to learn some skills that can help themselves yeah. to soothe, calm themselves so sleep can come naturally. But for breathing, I'm, my question is, do, have you ever noticed someone try to rely on this as a psychological or relaxation tool, but then if they try some of the practice at night, it does not work, they cannot fall asleep immediately, they start getting more nervous? I haven't had anyone increase their nerves with it. Hmm. So that hasn't been an experience so far with people. So a lot of times what what I'll advise people is try it for a few minutes before sleep. I also have some techniques that I use with straws and bubbles and all these things that help them even get more relaxed. And so I say, do this procedure and see how you feel in this process. Almost everyone feels more worn out and more relaxed afterwards. And so the typical response is, yes, it, it helped me go to sleep. Sometimes people say, you know, I, I practice and I say, okay, how long did you do it? They say, well, maybe a minute. I say, okay, do it longer until you feel your body shifting. And that's the key. I say five minutes, but if you haven't felt your body shift yet, then you might need longer or I'll give them a couple options. Okay, if, if just blowing out of your mouth didn't work, let's try bubbles, let's try a balloon to really help pull the rib cage down to get the body to calm down. So there are, I, when I work with someone, I'll give them several different techniques and say, okay, we're still doing this breathing process, but try this first, then this, then this. And most people will say it calms them down, they fall back to sleep, next thing they know it's morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so sounds like you have a quite a uh, full protocol with so many different ways. And sounds like it's not the expectation that, oh, I do this, I'm gonna fall asleep immediately, but I do this, I actually can feel a little bit more relaxed. Right, absolutely. So what a when we go through it, they're focusing on their body and releasing, especially right in the breastbone area where we hold a lot of tension that keeps us really ramped up is they're working on feeling that release and they feel their body calm down and they're getting out of that monkey mind where they're thinking about a hundred different things and they're focusing, okay, what is going on in my breastbone? As I exhale, can I feel my shoulders let go, my back let go, my, my butt let go? And they start to feel these things and it just shifts them. And so sometimes people fall asleep with straws in their mouth. Sometimes they're able to pull the straw and turn, you know, they have the light off. So they are able to fall asleep. Sometimes it calms them down enough that they just lay there and then just gradually fall asleep. And so they, the more they practice throughout the day, the quicker this happens at night because their body learns to recognize what it means to turn off and not to be ramped up because it's, it's all about habits, right? Right. What habits that we maintain. And if we're stuck in a certain mode, it's going to affect our sleep at night. So if we can just break up those nervous system habits and break up our mode, we can shift. And this tool becomes even more powerful when you do it at night. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I get people say, I practice this and I fall asleep and, you know, a loved one comes in the room and sees me with a straw in my mouth. So it does wonders. It's a matter of, does the person practice and can they sense and feel? And my job is to coach them and to communicate them how to feel the things that their body forgot how to feel. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that. It's all about practice. Mm -hmm. I know so many people when they learn a new method or when a provider tells them this possibly can be helpful, they only do that when they are really, really anxious. Yes. And when when things are the worst of the worst, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then they get more frustrated. They try a little bit, or oh, does not work very well, or do, not does does not work the way they think it should. Then they just get more frustrated. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's something that I say when you're going to change something radical about your life. And I say this is radical because it's one of our fundamentals. When you're changing something like breathing and how you hold your body we want to do it in a less stress condition. So we're going to start sitting. We're just going to practice sitting. And I want you to practice it when things are not crazy in your life. So pick a time of the day when things are not crazy and you want to practice it. So you want to get an idea of what it feels like, because that's when you're going to feel that transformation. Then as things get crazier, you can start implementing it into those crazy times and you start to feel your body shift because you have more control. And that's part of learning anything new. And that's one of the things I stress with people is I want you to make mistakes. I want you to bumble this and try to figure it out and not get it. And then we come back and we discuss because that's truly how you learn. I don't want you to get it perfect the first time. It has nothing to do with, I want to see you longer. It has to do with, you don't know what you don't know. If you get it right the first time, which no one does because you're transforming your body, but you need those mistakes. You need to feel something different and say, okay, what is this? Why am I doing that? Okay, well, this is why. And so the more we can get people to practice, you know, in a very simplistic form where there's not a lot of chaos and then progress, they can use it when their nerves are at their, you know, wit's end. They can use it to help bring them down out of that state. So it really does come with you are working to transform. So you need tiny practices here and there, not two hours at a time, just little bits here and there. Mm. So it's uh, not that much pressure, right? It's not another huge task I have to add to my to-do list. Yes, no, it's integrated. I say, even if you're sitting at a stoplight and there's everything is safe in the traffic, you're just sitting there, nothing's going on, you can sit there and practice a couple minutes not gonna not gonna impact your life no one has to know about it you go to the bathroom you know you're taking a break at work practice you have lunch break okay you have a lunch break take two minutes before you eat practice it's not invasive in your life and it's not another to-do task it's something just bringing yourself back to okay i care about my nervous system to calm it down for a couple minutes i'm going to give it a whirl Mm. And I really like some of the concept you are teaching people and the way breathing can help us. Sounds like very mindful. You use different mm-hmm. ways to help people be more mindful about their body, about their signals, body sending out, uh, be more mindful about the present moment. It does help with that. So there is a lot of mindfulness training out there. And luckily, this helps people with that as well because we're teaching you what does your body feel at this moment? Where are you holding the tension? A lot of people are not aware that they'll have a shoulder that's really high and they have no awareness, but when they go through this process and sometimes the, the, the exercises I have them do include reaching or doing something with their arm or leg, they become very aware that the muscles in their body are contracting and putting their body in a certain position without them even realizing it. And so there's a lot of awareness training that goes along with what we're doing. And it's, again, as soon as they become aware and they realize what muscles are overworking, they have control, they can change it. And again, it's the whole empowerment over your body that it's a skill they get. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. I I think that's why zoom like video chat can be so Mm -hmm. helpful you can really observe it's amazing right we day to day we do something we don't even realize we are positioning a certain way and that can indicate of uh, something but as a professional you can see it you point it out and help people do something about it absolutely i can't tell you how many times i have seen the way someone sits at their their work desk, in their chair, how they stand, all of that, Mm -hmm. how much that affects their chronic pain, their inability to sleep, their stress and anxiety. It is a huge problem. 
people have no idea. They get these thousand dollar ergonomic chairs that put their body in such a bad position and cause so much pain. It is scary. I'll see so many people there. They say, well, this chair is supposed to be this best thing. And it shoves their back into this arch, causes them tension, stress. And they say, oh, I'm supposed to sit on the edge of my chair or on this bouncy ball. I can't tell you how many times that increases their pain, increases impingement of tissues, ramps them up. And then they turn into this mess of just pain, stress, sleep deprivation. And as soon as we start shifting things out of it, go through the ergonomics, go through, hey, guess what? You want your knees higher than your hips. You want your chest down, belly out, and sit all the way back in the chair and let yourself relax. Because sitting is an innately a position of rest, but we've turned it into some type of exercise position because we sit too long. And then that sitting position now creates problems for our body and it becomes a detriment to us and it affects us then. And we have trouble resting at night. We trouble sleeping because we have pain or stress or our mind won't turn off. Wow. Yeah, yeah I remember last year, right at the beginning of the COVID, mm -hmm. I start you know, doing a lot of online therapy. And then very quickly, I start having a lot of, a lot of back pain. Mm -hmm. And I did upgrade my, um, my chair, my table, yeah. but you know, it definitely got better, but I still always have the question whether my seating position is the correct one. The pain mm -hmm. is less, so I thought it's helpful. But you know, without professional suggestion, I will never know. I always have that question back in my mind because sometimes I still don't feel comfortable. Even I know I have expensive chair, expensive desk. Yeah, the price doesn't mean everything. And I can't tell you, I have many physicians or psychiatrists and psychologists who are clients of mine who have you know, converted to Zoom. And I've worked with them. I say, okay, let's look at your setup because we have to make sure that you are in a good position. Now let's add into a little bit of this, you know, this technique and this practice to your daily regimen. And many of them had no idea that they were in fight or flight mode just based on how they position themselves. And so we've shifted them out of it and they become very aware. So they're able to teach their clients as well to help them. And so part of the reason I talk about this is try to bring awareness to people and share, hey, you have more power than you think to get yourself in a better situation, to sleep better, to rest better, to be less painful. Right. So it sounds like breathing and learn how to like calm down your body, your nervous mm -hmm. system is one big part, but the other yes. big part is the body positioning. Absolutely. You hit all three nervous system, breathing and body position. I talk about the inner woven connection between those three things. You can't do one without addressing the other two. So you hit it right on the head. <laughs> Great. I definitely learned a lot. So I'm wondering near the end of our show, is there any practical suggestions or tips if, you know, people start questioning, wow, is my um, office set up okay? Or is my like, uh, should I learn more breathing technique? Would you be able to provide maybe one or two very quick and easy tips for yeah. our listeners? Yeah, so two things I'll say. One, let your belly button relax. Let it hang out. Do not suck it in. When you exhale, do not suck it in. That's that's the gatekeeper. If you suck your belly button in or hold your belly button in, it lifts up your rib cage. You automatically start to hinge off of your low back and compress on your low back. So if we let the belly button out, the rib cage can go, drop down. It's going to start to shift your breathing. For sitting, I tell people, allow yourself to sit all the way back in the chair, make sure your knees are slightly higher than your hips or level. I like a little bit higher because it allows your tailbone to curl under you so you can relax into the chair back. It allows you to divert energy to your performance, to your job, to your task, to your clients, instead of guarding this energy into a tense state in your body. It allows you to focus better and improve your attention and performance. So if we can shift, get yourself lit back in your chair, tailbone under you and knees higher than your hips, just a little bit, just like, you know, maybe an inch. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah while you're talking, I'm thinking 
<laughs> am I sitting okay with my breath? Am I breathing uh -huh. right? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, wow, seems like my chair is doing okay. My knees actually is not that low. Actually, it's uh, basically the same level, my knees and my hip. Good. Make sure your knees are at the level of the top of your hip. If they're not, get them higher. And you'll feel a difference. I would play with it. Put a couple books under your feet and see what it feels like to have your knees higher than your hips. You'll see how much your back can relax and it calms you down. Mm. It's quite powerful. People don't realize these little things that we do with our body position that really increase the stress in our life. Right. Now I, I think back of my past two chairs. I was wondering my previous chair, similar brand, but the, the previous chair did not have a ring. You can step on it. The Got second it. chair has a ring underneath so you can step mm -hmm. on it. So I like the one I can step on it better because that yep. definitely now I know it reads up my knees. That's why. Yeah, that's why you like it. Most people, when they sit at a bar stool, they hate it if their feet hang, it torques on their back because it tips their pelvis forward, puts them in fight or flight mode. Most people will put their feet on the rungs. It stabilizes them, allows their tailbone to curl under, calms them down. Hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. This yeah. is awesome. So yeah. if our listeners, because after listening to this, I definitely <laughs> want to be your client to consult yeah. with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure a lot of our deans possibly have similar um, sure. questions. How can they yeah. find you? How can they find your service? Yeah. So I, I offer a free 15 minute consult for anyone who wants to, you know, talk to me, I can give them resources. There are many resources on my website, but a lot of times people have specific questions. So I do offer the free 15 minute consult. I tell them to email me. It's amy, A-M-Y, at paberinstitute.com, P-A-B-R institute.com. And that will just say they heard me on your podcast and I, we can set up a call um, and we'll go from there because there are many options out there. I had free videos. I have, you know, free different groups out there. And if they email me, it gives me a chance to say, Hey, what are your needs? Let me get you what you need. That's wonderful. I really like that. Yeah. I especially appreciate you offer so many free resources and free short consultation to mm -hmm. help people find what works best for them. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because sometimes people don't want to work one on one, they want to try something on their own. Well, there are plenty of things out there that I can refer them to that, you know, written stuff that I have videos that I have. But sometimes people need more, they're more complex, and they want the one on one care. And, you know, when it's one on one, I can target it exactly to your body and say, okay, this is exactly what you need to do. Go do that. But so it, the options are available for anyone. Yeah. Awesome. I will put your website and your, sure. uh, all these links, whatever other uh, platforms or groups you are running on the show note at deep into .co. So when people listen to our episode, they will be able to directly click into your website. Sounds great. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for giving me the chance to share and educate and, and help your audience. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot. I'm, I'm sure our audience learned a lot too. Wonderful. Thank you for watching our videos or listening to our podcast. If you like our show, please feel free to subscribe, like, and share it. If you have any questions or feedback, we would always love to hear from you. You can either email us or leave feedback on our website at mindbodygarden.com or directly under the YouTube video channel. Thank you very much for your company today and hopefully to hear from you or have you with us next time.